Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist, and today we have a short video for you on a very common heater issue where the heater will start, you'll hear it actually ignite, and then it'll run for a few seconds and shut off. And then, of course, it takes about 30 seconds and it'll repeat that process over and over and over again until it faults out. So this is something that eludes a lot of the different technicians. And while there can be multiple problems, this one seems to be the most difficult for people to figure out. And it's actually a very easy, simple solution. So we're gonna take a look at this and hopefully you'll find this educational. Okay, so here we are at our heater. And of course, the first thing we wanna do is remove this panel. And we're going to use a 3 8 inch nut driver. And there's four screws that you would take out. We've taken those out for make this a little bit faster. You lift up this panel and then you can remove it. Set it to the side. And here is your gas valve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 3 16 inch Allen wrench and we are going to remove the little plug on the side of this so that I can attach my manometer to this. So we have shut off our gas valve and I recommend using an analog manometer. You could use a slack tube. Um, the reason why is they're a lot more responsive if you use a digital one, it just doesn't react fast enough to see if you're losing your, um, your gas pressure. So we'll take this out, which is on the side over here. And then we're gonna put in our little adapter on the side so that we can attach our manometer to it. Attach our hose. Turn on our gas valve. And we're gonna check our pressure, our pressure here is roughly 12 inches of water column, 10 inches of water column. And that 10 inches is ideal for this situation. Um, we turn our heater on. Way to go through the cycle. We wanna make sure that it does not drop more than about one to two inches of water column when it fires. If it does drop more than two or three inches of water column, then you probably have an issue where you don't have enough gas volume. So there we go, we got it fired and we're back off. All right, so we verified that our gas pressure is correct. We don't have an issue there. So what's causing this to happen? A lot of people believe that it is the ignition control module that it's not receiving the flame information. But that's a lot more rare than this situation. This situation is that even though your AGS and or your high limit are functioning, they have been compromised and there's water in it and what happens when the water gets into it is it creates a short to ground and it limits the amount of current or voltage that's getting to the gas valve. So initially there's enough current or voltage for the gas valve to actually turn on, but then as soon as it turns on, you wind up finding out that it kicks right back off because of insufficient voltage or insufficient current. So we need to expose where the AGS and the high limit is, which is off on the side panel. The side panel has three screws 
that holds it on. Same 3 8 inch nut driver to take those off. You want to make sure that you put those in a safe place so that you don't lose them. It's always nice to be able to put as many screws back on as you took off. This will slip off very nicely and easily. And then we have over on the one side, we have the high limit. And on the other side, we have the AGS. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump these to see whether the heater will remain on. We already know that the heater fires, but it does not stay on. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate this device and the other device because it is providing a short to ground. So there's two ways you can do it. One is you can make yourself a nice little jumper and you can just plug this in. To both sides. And quite honestly, I would do both of them. Just from my experience is that you're going to find that when one goes, the other one's not far behind it. So that's one type. The other thing you could do is you could get yourself some alligator clips and pull this off, and then you can jump that with your alligator clip. Now we have taken that out of the circuit and if there's water that is compromising in this actual sensor, which is a switch, it will no longer provide the short to ground. So if we turn our heater on and we wait for the cycle, You can now hear that the heater comes on, it stays on, we have a good consistent gas pressure, so everything is looking excellent, and problem resolved. If this doesn't resolve the problem, and it's, it's very difficult to test this with an ohm meter, um, but if this doesn't resolve the problem, then you probably have an, a problem with your ignition control module, and that it is not reading the flame correctly. So that's the extent of it. We're going to go ahead and shut this heater off, put everything back together, and um, we, we'll re of course replace our AGS and our high limit. We'll give you the part numbers for those right here. they simply screw off with a wrench. You would unscrew it here, unscrew that one, and then make sure that when you put the new ones in that they're Teflon taped. The new ones out of the, out of the package actually come Teflon taped, but if they're not Teflon taped, you want to make sure that you do so that that heater doesn't leak. I hope you found the video educational. If you did, please drop us a like and especially follow us. Thank you for watching and have a great day.